Um, so yeah, welcome to today's workshop um, on data visualization using augmented and virtual reality. So my name is Ronel Sikat, and I'm a staff scientist at the Kaos Visualization Lab. <clears throat> so for today, the main thing that I want to uh, get across is for you guys to start thinking about how can AR or VR help you to visualize, understand, explain, or manipulate your data better. So I guess, or hopefully you're here because you have some sort of data, right? So it could be a image stack where you can extract some 3D information from, or some sort of 3D model, right? So this is an example of a 3D model of a coral reef, right? So uh, this is from the Red, oh, not Red Sea Research Center, but from the Shusha Restoration uh, Project. Uh, you might have 3D models of, um, let's say, products, right, that you're trying to develop and manufacture. Maybe you have some 3D spatial data, like the 3D path of an underwater vehicle, right? Or some 3D structures, for example, like, uh, what is this? Oh, so these are like um, some cells, right? So it's also from an image tag and converted to 3D. So maybe you have some of these data sets, right? And what you want to think about is how we can use virtual reality and immerse yourself in your data, right? So can I, um, can I, um, for example, the coral reef, right? Can I put it into my world and basically virtually dive into the reef? Um, can I build some virtual dashboard, right? Like you see on the bottom left there, because in virtual reality you have sort of a higher resolution display, or maybe you want to use augmented reality, right, uh, where you can bring your data into the world, right, instead of you going into the virtual world. So we're gonna see all of these. And again, focus on this question, how can AR and VR help you with your data, okay? So before I get into that, I just want to do a quick introduction of KVL. So that's the visualization lab. Um, and it's part, it's one of the, I don't know, 12 core labs uh, in KAUST. And basically we provide expertise in data visualization and data science, right? So we have different, we cover different topics. So we have uh, six PhDs who can help you with your data visualization and data science. So one of the topics is scientific visualization, or if you have, if you're using Shaheen, for example, if you're running simulations there, we have someone who can help you visualize the data that you compute in Shaheen. Uh, we have information visualization. So this is more like, uh, think of like dashboards on your uh, computer or on the, on the web. Um, we have data science and machine learning, right? So this is a hot topic right now, and we have two uh, PhDs who can help you um, get into data science and machine learning. And finally, we have uh, image segmentation and 3D reconstruction and ARVR. And this is basically me. Um, and our focus today is the ARVR part, but I just wanted to give you a quick um, kind of overview of the image segmentation and 3D reconstruction because you might need it to convert your data into something 3D, right, that you can visualize in AR, VR. So uh, a common um, kind of pipeline that we work with is this. So you have an image stack that you get from using the microscopes or other imaging devices here in KAUST, CT, X-ray, um, and you want to perform segmentation, which is basically separating the different materials inside the data like in this example, separating the sand particles from the air, air pockets. And then we can convert that uh, label image or the segmented uh, image into a 3D model, right? And now uh, this allows you to do your visualization and analysis. Like if you wanna measure the volume or the surface area of the sand particle, you can do that. Um, but also for 3D visualization, which we'll look at next. So aside from the expertise in the different topics that I showed you, we also provide uh, visualization facilities that you can kind of borrow, right? So we have these uh, high resolution 2D displays, we have the VR headsets, like the one that I have here, and we have, um, if you pass by uh, building one, 
along the spine, you should see like these big screens, right? And that's what we have here. Uh, and I'll talk more about those later. So basically, you can borrow these things if you want to do a 3D visualization and analysis. And yeah, so if you need or if you want more information, you can visit the wiki. Um, or you can send us an email at help at this uh, if you need help with data visualization and analysis. Okay. Yeah, so again, 35 people signed up. Um, and I, there was one question in the registration page asking about the experience with ARVR. So this was the statistic for that. And basically, based on this one, I kind of tailored the workshop for today. And because most of you guys don't have, I mean, I don't know which part you're here now. I mean, it's probably going to be uh, slightly different. But most of the people, they don't have much experience with ARVR, right? So I kind of tailored the, today's workshop um, to, I mean, around the, the, the participants. So today we're going to do a AR VR introduction. So just talk about what AR and VR is, okay? And how does it work? And then I'm going to talk about what we do in the KVL in terms of AR VR, how we can help you in terms of AR VR. We're going to get a, take a break, and then there's a sign up. This is basically if you want to have a chat with me tomorrow, like 30 minute uh, slot. If you think AR and VR will be helpful for you, then we can have a chat in more detail, like how we can help you specifically. Or I can also give you a demo of the AR, VR uh, applications we have. And then I want to talk about a few example scenarios, right? So these are examples of, OK, uh, I want to start with, uh, let's say, the 3D model of the coral reef. What should I do? Or I want to start with an image stack. What should I do? OK, so I'm going to talk about these example scenarios. And hopefully, there will be something that you will be uh, your scenario will be very similar with, so you get a better idea of how to move forward from there. Then we're going to have another break. Then we'll do a hands-on example. Okay. So this hands-on example, um, I think um, I'm just going to do it more of, I'm going to show you the step-by-step, -step, so you don't necessarily have to follow with your uh, laptop. But if you want to, we can also do that. And then if there's time or if if you have questions, then we can discuss those, OK? All right. Cool. So let's start with the AR VR introduction. Uh, by the way, anytime you have questions, interrupt me, OK? I mean, just just few of us here. So um, it's, it should be fine. All right. So what is AR VR? So actually, quickly, who of you has experience with AR VR? I mean, just to, all right, OK. OK, awesome, cool. That's, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so AR, VR, I mean, this is a very simplistic definition of it. But for me, it's a combination of hardware, right? So you have your VR or AR devices plus software, right? So the software that runs on these devices that allow you to uh, display and interact with a blend of real and virtual objects, right? So what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, in the research world, people usually talk about this reality-virtuality continuum, where on the one end, you have reality, right? This 3D world that we live in, this is reality, right? And on the other hand, you have virtual reality, where it's completely virtual. Once I wear this headset, right, I don't see the real world anymore, but all I see is completely virtual content, right? So that's one end. And then you have sort of the in-betweens, augmented reality. Right, so once I wear this headset, I have the glasses here. I can still see you, right? But uh, the device can basically show me uh, virtual content, right? In addition to the real world. So I'm going to show that later. Um, there's another one uh, which is not very popular: augmented virtuality. Sounds weird, but basically you're in VR, but you have the option. So if your uh, device has a camera, for example. It can basically take what it sees outside and bring it into VR, right? So an example would be, I'm in VR, and I, I have a physical keyboard in front of me. So maybe I want to show that keyboard in front of me so I can type while in VR, OK? But today, we'll focus on augmented reality and virtual reality and reality. All right, so I wanted to start right away with the, a demo of the VR to already give you like an impression of 
what is it, right? Now, the sad part is that my nice VR headset is not working. This happens, and uh, I don't have time to fix it, but I have a backup. I have another VR headset here, but it's not as nice. Uh, and you're going to see later there's something wrong with it, like the interactions are a bit limited. But let's, let's run it anyway. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, let's do the VR demo. So f right now, I mean, I'm going to talk about this software later. But for now, I just want to show you like what's going on in VR, right? So I'm going to run my application. And now I'm going to go into VR. So I don't see any of you right now. Uh, wait, I'll, I'll let you see what I see. Um, Uh, okay, so that's what I see inside, okay? So that's what I see inside VR. Can you see? You can see it, right? So you can see my virtual hands and the controller there. And I'm in a virtual world, right? So I don't see you. So everything that I see is completely virtual. So I'm inside a, a game, basically. And um, right now, the application runs on my laptop, and there's a cable here that streams the, the images from my laptop, right? And then the headset, basically, and the controller, it tracks its position in 3D space, and it sends that information into the laptop, okay? So it's kind of the laptop and the, the device are exchanging information, okay? So I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But for now, this is VR, right? So, um, so I mean, I can walk around. I mean, I don't want to bump into anything. But I can walk around, and uh, I can teleport. So now I'm teleported here on the table. There's a coral there on the table that I put uh, yesterday. So you can see I can interact with it. Um, so this is the problem. The hand interaction is limited right now. But you can see I can grab it and I can explore it. Um, so there's some physics. Let me just involved here. So if I move the the objects, they basically interact with each other, right? So there's some physics involved there. There's other things. Um, wait, I'm just checking that I'm not lost. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. So I just wanted. Okay, let me go here. Um, oh, this is not going to work. So this is the problem with this kind of setup. Like, my hands are not reaching far enough. There's something wrong with it. So I will just um, show you the examples where maybe it's going to work. Uh, OK, I cannot reach them. But basically, <laughs> this is the problem, right? So sorry about that. But basically, like I, can, I should be able to grab that controller. And then there's a toy over there that I can, I should be able to control. And that's not working now. Let me see if there's anything else I can. Uh, okay, I cannot reach it. So there's an arrow, a bow and arrow there, so I should be able to play, but yeah, that doesn't work. But this is VR, right? This is VR. It's basically the, the main motivation for VR is games, as you can imagine, right? I mean, the, the people who invented VR intended it to be used for playing games, right? Um, but that's the thing. For us scientists, we can also use it to play with our data, right? Like you saw the coral there. That's a, um, that could be a coral from the Red Sea Research Center, right? If you have, um, let's say, let me just stop this. If you have, let's say, uh, um, microscopy of a cell, right? Then it could be a 3D model of a cell, right? And, and I'll show you more uh, later on. But this was just to give you an idea about what VR is, if you haven't seen it before, OK? And yeah, it's just a bit sad that that's not working, because that one is super awesome. But anyway, we'll, we'll do with what we have. Um, so there's other. VR examples, so this is one. 
This is from Google, right? Just to give you a, a, an idea of the other examples where VR can be restricted. Mm -hmm. Oh, virtual travel, right? By the way, you can screen is okay. So virtual travel, right? So you're just in your room and you can travel anywhere. So it's going to be similar with the coral reef, for example, right? So I can, instead of diving and getting wet and with like all the expensive setup, I can virtually dive into the coral reef, right? So this is one example. You've probably heard of the metaverse, right? Um, so this is one, this is Horizon Worlds from uh, Facebook slash Meta. Um, where basically they allow people to virtually meet in a virtual world, right? Um, all right, so that was VR, and now I want to give you like a quick overview of AR, okay? Or like how, how does it work, what is it? So this device here is called a HoloLens, okay? So it's uh, one of the like higher end uh, augmented reality devices. Um, and I'll, I'll stream what I see over here. Uh, All right, so you should see here what I see with a bit of delay, right? So there's a bit of lag. And I mean, what you'll see is there's like a window floating around me. That's basically the user interface for this. And this is running some version of Windows, right? So this is a, a device for Microsoft. So can you see the, yeah, there's a floating thing and I can see all of you. Um, so uh, how do you interact with it? Do you see my hands? I mean, okay, there's a bit of delay, but you should see my virtual hands like lighting up a bit. And then there's basically uh, like this circle following my finger. That's your kind of mouse cursor, right? That allows you to interact with uh, the user interface, okay? And like right now I'm gonna open an application. Uh, so this is my menu, right? And these are the applications. So I'm just gonna open one application. Okay. Sorry, there's a delay, so I'm just going to try to talk slower. All right. Um, by the way, like this device is continuously scanning my world, right? So like what I, how, while I walk around, it's actually seeing you <laughs> and it's building virtual models of you. Okay. And um, what that allows me to do is later on, I'll show you, then it allows me to interact with the real world, right? Like putting objects on the table, uh, putting things on top of your head, things like that, right? But, so there's a lot of examples here, and I mean, you can try this later. Uh, but what I want to do is this one. I think this is the, one of the coolest ones. All right, uh, let me wait for the delay. All right, so this is a nice example because it shows you what are the possible hand interactions using the HoloLens, right? So you see here, there's a bunch of 3D objects around me. Uh, and for example, there's a piano keyboard. And you see, oh, there's a delay. So I can interact with these keys, right? Using my finger. Uh, okay, okay. So of course it's not perfect, 
but I don't know if you hear it, but there's, it plays some sound when I press the keys, right? So that's one. I mean, I can, for example, grab this cup of coffee, right? And I mean, I can, they all have interaction as well, so they can like interact with each other. I'll put it back. Um, there's this 3D model of the Earth, right? So when I grab onto it, it shows me these annotations, right? Telling me the different parts. So for example, you can think of using this for educational purposes, right? Which is one of the like popular applications of the HoloLens. Uh, like for example, if you have an, a 3D model of a human being, then you can teach about anatomy using this. Um, so what else did I want to show? So you have your usual like user interface. So you have the buttons here. Yeah, so you have buttons that you can press like this. All right. Um, what else? So you can grab using your hands like this, right? Like so. All right. So you have windows, right? Like this one, and you can like scroll. Okay. All right. Um, so you can open, where was that? You can open a web browser in AR. Um, and yeah, you have your usual 2D interface, okay? Um, so let me just close this for now. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, this is, this is amazing. And now imagine, for example, having your data set here in this world. Um, and <clears throat> all, I, I see this in stereo, right? So it's as if the 3D, like the thing is in front of me. So later, I mean, since there's just a few of us, I'll let each of you try it out, okay? So you get a, a better feeling. So now what I want to do, there's a last uh, example that I wanted to show, um, just because it's, it's awesome. So I have here a model of the Mars rover. Okay, do you see it there? Okay. So, I mean, I, I put it here because it's awesome. And like, imagine if you're building a product, right? And let's say you don't have a prototype yet, like a physical prototype. If you have the digital version, like usually you model it using CAD or whatever software, then you can bring it here first and have a look. And if you have some sort of simulation, you can even run the simulation and see how it works in virtual world, right? So that's, that's pretty cool, I think. All right, so that was the, uh, let me close this now. So before I close it, I mean, you'll notice, right, the interactions are different from your typical like laptop desktop um, interface. So it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, um, it's fine. So see, now the menu is like, you put your hand like that, a button shows up. That's your home button, right? Like, that's your home button, yeah? Okay, and now, I'm just gonna press this home and everything closes. So I'm not sure if you saw that, let me try. I click this person here. Did you see the, did you see that? That's the current scan of the room, right? So, I mean, I don't wanna click on people, but if I click on, okay, let me click on you. Um, so it's scanning the chairs, the tables, right? Um, so it keeps a, a scan of the, the 3D world, and I can use it later for interacting with the world, okay? Anyway, so that's, that's, the, that's augmented reality, right? Again, I'll let you try this later. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, the delay is just because it's streaming from here to here, but for, from my side, there's no delay. It's only for this screen, yeah, because it's streaming wirelessly to iCampus. So the, there's a camera here, it streams iCampus and then to my laptop and then to here. So there's a delay, but later when you try it, you're gonna see it's, it's real time. So there's no delay. <clears throat> Pretty awesome, right? So that's, that's um, cool technology that we have access to, right? So let's try it with your data. I think that would be awesome. So anyway, this is 
let's say, a higher-end version of augmented reality. So your phones already have some sort of augmented reality, right? So you probably use apps like this that add something virtual to the real world, right? Or if you've heard of IKEA, for example, there's an app where you can try or see how the furniture looks like in your living room before you buy it. So this is already some form of augmented reality, and they use similar technologies. Um, so this is an example product from Microsoft uh, for the HoloLens. So it's uh, augmented reality Skype, kind of, right? So you have a person talking to you who they see what you're seeing. So for example, this could be a, an expert, and she's helping that other person debug or fix some, some issue, right? Um, and yeah, for architecture, for example, then you can do like discussions about something 3D, right? All right, so that was a, a kind of a preview of what VR and AR is. So hopefully by now you have some sort of idea uh, of what it is. And now let's have a simplistic look or a simplified version of how does it work. So first of all, you have your input, right? You have your device. Could be the headset that has the camera in it. It could be the controller that takes the position and the button presses. That's your input device. And it sends information to your computer, right? As I said, via the cable or maybe wirelessly. Or in some cases, like here, the computer is inside, right? This one is computing it in itself. The input is processed in the computer and Based on the, the processing, you get some output, right? So something gets displayed to your eyes. And this is the hardware part. And of course, you have an application running inside, and that's your um, okay application plus virtual content, right? Like, um, for example, the 3D models of the coffee mug uh, in VR, like those cubes and the coral, those are your virtual content that you have to create, or they have to come somewhere. And you bring them into your application. And this uh, constitutes the software part, right? Again, very simplistic. I um, kind of describe it like this because later I'll explain um, in more detail like the parts. So in terms of hardware, um, let's say there's, there's two, or I will talk about like two main categories. One is the head-mounted displays, which is what you see here. And from the name itself, it's something that you put on your head, right? Um, and the other one are the immersive uh, environments or caves. So this is what we have in uh, building one, right? Um, has anyone of you seen these setups before? Yeah, okay, good. So if not, again, um, you can reach out to me and then I can give you a tour. But basically these are like bigger setups, so it's as you can see here from the pictures, it's a bunch of 3D screens that surround you, right? And you wear uh, stereo glasses so that what you see is uh, 3D or stereo. Um, and it's some form of VR, right? Because it immerses you into some virtual world. So again, these are two kind of um, hardware categories that I'll talk about in today's uh, workshop. In terms of software, so there's actually quite a lot of options for like building AR and VR applications. So on the left, I put here like the AR VR ready application. What that means is you don't do any programming, right? Just a few clicks and then you're in VR. Um, so this is like your app stores, right? So where you look at the app store and you look for apps uh, and you just download them and click and it just runs. So this is for your games, for example, right? Um, and then we have Aviso plus TechVis. So I will talk about this later. Who of you have used Aviso? Okay, cool. So Aviso is a, a data visualization and analysis software that we have here in Kaos. Um, and what that means is uh, if you're, let's say, um, using the microscopes in the imaging core lab, you get your data, you want to visualize and analyze it, you can bring it into Aviso. You do your visualization and analysis. And then if you just run TechVis, which is a separate application, 
it brings your Aviso data into VR, okay? And I will show that later. The nice thing about this is you don't have to do any programming. Just a few clicks and your data is in VR, which is awesome. There's other options, 3D Slicer and PowerView. They have VR plugins, but uh, I just try them briefly, but we don't officially support them yet. But if you want to try them or if you want to use them, let us know and we can figure it out. So on the right hand side, we have, let's say, the more complex tools for building AR and VR applications. So the first one is SimLab. This is a very new kind of software that we provide. So this is a drag and drop kind of interface where there's also like none to minimal programming. And I'll, I'll show a demo of this later. And then there's game engines, okay? So game, game engines from the name itself, these are, this is software that is used for building games, right? And as you can tell, the AR and VR applications uh, that we use are essentially games, right? The only difference is that we want to put data inside. So there's different game engines, but for, day, for today, we're gonna talk about Unity. Uh, and then there's low level programming. So this is more hardcore. So you really like code everything and just use uh, a bunch of libraries. So you see there's basically a, a, a spectrum of, in terms of, let's say, difficulty. Um, but of course, the simpler versions, you don't have much freedom in terms of what you can build. But on the very end, you can build whatever you want, but it's just more complex, okay? So for today, I'm gonna to talk about the three highlighted ones, TechVis, SimLab, and Unity. Um, okay, so we've seen how VR and AR kind of works, and the demos that I showed you are not necessarily showing you like data, except for the coral maybe. But now I wanna talk about specifically data visualization, right, using AR and VR. And what I mean by that, so this is what you've seen. We have our AR, VR devices there. And now we want our virtual content, right, what we see in AR, VR to be our data sets, okay? So again, it could be your scans, uh, product prototype, some 3D model of a virtual world, or, um, let's say volume rendering of your uh, data, okay? So this is now what I want to talk about, which is the, the, the main thing for today. So this whole data visualization using AR, VR, there's actually a, kind of a new term for it. Uh, I mean, in the research world, this is uh, the more common term. It's called immersive analytics. Um, and that's basically just uh, a new term for data visualization in AR, VR. But the idea is, you know, compared to using your desktop and your laptop, we want to take advantage of the new interaction and display technologies that AR and VR provides to support data understanding. And I'll talk more about each of these uh, like advantages. For example, because you can see things in 3D, it's great for looking at 3D data, right? Because your, your monitor is just, it's 2D, right? Yes, you can see the 3D structure if you rotate the object, but there could be an advantage to actually seeing the 3D data in stereo, right? Like putting the product prototype in front of me and I can walk around it, grab it in my, in my hands. Uh, it could be helpful for what's called situated data. I'll talk about this later, but basically this is data that has some association to the real world, right? Uh, I mean, I'll just show the example later. It's a bit hard to explain. Um, performing natural interactions, right? So for example, you want to draw in 3D. I mean, that's hard to do in a uh, computer unless you're like an expert. I'm not sure if you've seen in the web, there was like an artist who was in VR and who was like painting in 3D. So, so that's, that's one advantage of using AR, VR, right? Because we are used to dealing with the 3D world, like we move in 3D, uh, can we take advantage of that and, and um, do things easier in AR, VR? So I'll show an example later. Immersive storytelling, right? So I'll, I'll show an example later where you can basically, the user is um, in VR and it's like a roller coaster through the stock market chart, right? You know, like the stock market chart is like going up and down. So we're gonna have a look at that. 
All right, so here are the examples. Okay? So this is an example uh, for what's called situated data, right? So basically what you see here is someone wearing the HoloLens, and then they have like a, <clears throat> some sort of electronics set up in front of them, right? And they want to use augmented reality for teaching, right? Let me, yeah, sorry, the sound is, is coming from there. So they want to use the HoloLens to see the invisible things, right? Like the, the current, the sound waves. Um, so you can see, for example, there, a real-time uh, visualization of the, I don't know, probably some current. So this is one example, right, of situated data visualization. So you have virtual data that's associated to something real, so something in the real world. In this case, the circuit, okay? So this is another example of uh, augmented reality. So this is a wind flow simulation. So it's not super clear because I just got it from, uh, from YouTube. But this is an example that I developed a long time ago. So this shows you kind of the, the flow of the wind. And usually you can look at that on a computer and then you have a 3D model of the building. But this one, if, you, like if you're, and you're wearing the HoloLens, so for example, I'll be able to see like how the wind flows in this room, right? And if I'm an architect or uh, whoever's interested in this, I can take a look at that uh, in the actual space. And yeah, for planning and prototyping, right? So the furniture, obviously, before buying the furniture, you can try it out in your space. When you are prototyping, before you actually manufacture, you can check out, I don't know, like the size, the specification, etc. And this is the natural interactions. So if you're familiar with this game, right? So in this game, uh, you have this wire that you have to like move around and try to avoid touching the wire, right? So this is a nice example of, you know, humans may, like moving into, uh, like showing an example how easy it is for us to move something in 3D. So there was a paper that actually used this idea and let humans trace neurons in 3D, right? So basically they show you, uh, and I'll show the video. Yeah. So let's just take a look at the video. So here you see in VR, a visualization of the neurons, right? And then the user has, uses the controller to just trace in 3D. So it's kind of similar to that game. I mean, imagine tracing these lines in using your mouse, right? That's, that's kind of tricky. But possible, of course. Yeah, so hopefully you get the idea. Um, all right, so this is the immersive storytelling that I was talking about. Um, um, we can play it on the browser, actually. All right, so, so I mean, I'm running it on my laptop right now, but basically you can run it with the headset on. So this is kind of, uh, I think, NASDAQ, so it's kind of reflects the, let's say, the stock market value, whatever. And in 2002 or whatever, like before that, there was a, a, a steep decline. So if you're in VR, it just gives you that sensation, right, of falling falling down. So it kind of just evokes an emotional thing. Of course, you can always just look at the 2D chart. That's fine. But this is more of an experiential thing, right? Like, um, yeah, so now I'm, uh, right. Uh, I don't know why it stopped. I'm just running it again. <clears throat> yeah. 
So hopefully you get the idea. So there's another example where they want to show people um, some data about climate change, right? Okay. Oh yeah. Did I miss something? Was there like an instruction or? Ah, okay. There you go. Read the instructions. Yeah. So now, okay. Uh, yeah. So supposedly you feel the the falling. It's not as dramatic here. Uh, I'll just close it. But this was like at some point this one became like a very popular uh, example. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, like there was this um, climate change uh, storytelling thing where they put people in VR and then they sit you on a chair and the water level like slowly rises, right? Until it's like it just drowns you. And that kind of tells you the story of like in 10 years, if we don't like take care of climate change, whatever, like this is going to be the water level where you live, right? So again, immersive storytelling, right? So it's just um, a whole new level of, of telling stories with data. So this one, I'm going to try to run it. Let's see. Um, this is Cell View VR. So it basically allows you to explore a 3D model of a, in this case, a virus. So let me try to run it if it's going to work. And again, after this whole thing, um, you guys can try out the different demos. Oh, wait, you cannot see. Oh, you can see. All right, so let me do explore. So there's a guided tour. Oh, you can see what I see, right? Okay. So there's a guided tour. Um, okay, let's take that one. Every so, year, 1.2 million people die as a result of HIV yeah. infection. So you can tell a story. 2 million additional people get infected every year. By now, about 39 million people died because of the infection. In the following tour, you will learn about the main components of the virus and how it is built up. Okay, and it should show me the, okay. Whew. So you see, I mean, just that, like the virus coming up from below me. Characteristics, right. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, family retrovirus. Okay, so it's actually in my face. Virus. Um, the infection. I'm trying to move it to back. Be. Okay, so I mean, this is what I'm saying. Like, I think this. Um... Structure. The HIV virus is about 100. No, what? Oh, here, here, here. 120 nanometers big um... and is of a nearly round shape. Compared Wait, to. Let other... me just do the explore. All right. Okay, cool. Let me just do this, right? So this is the virus in front of me and. I should be able to interact with it. Yeah. Nope. Okay. It's not working. But you get the idea, right? So again, sorry about this, but uh, we have to deal like deal with what we have. Um but you saw it, right? Like the 3D model? Okay. So you can imagine, for example, if you have your own uh, 3D data, and let's say you want to present your results or whatever to the world, this is a nice way to do it. Um, so this is uh, Professor Ivan Viola from the Visual Computing Center. Clip. And they're using the HoloLens for visualization and... Uh, Done. That was the short one. Sorry? Yes. So actually, that's something I forgot to say. Like this one, it's quite powerful. So you can do voice command. It can even track your eyes. 
I mean, if you want to try it later, there's a demo where you control things with your eyes, which is amazing. Um, what else? Voice command. Um, yeah, and it can track your hands. It's pretty powerful. It's also pretty expensive. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have two of these in the lab, so you don't have to buy it. You can try it out. Um, and if you have applications, then we can help you build them, right? Um, but yeah, so I was going to say, like, Professor Ivan Viola, they use the HoloLens, they use VR a lot as well, because they have a lot of these viruses that they model and they visualize in 3D. Um, and if you ask him, he'll probably say, like, it's great for collaboration. Uh, but for me personally, I think it's great for giving demos, right? People are just, there's still a wow effect. Like, people are amazed whenever they see uh, AR and VR. So it's great for attracting people. Um, all right, so that was, uh, okay. That was a quick intro of AR, VR. So now I just want to quickly talk about the capabilities we have at KVL, right? So AR, VR development is like, as I said, there's a wide spectrum from easy to complex. And um, I want to show you what we support at uh, KVL, right? So now think about how AR, VR plus KVL can help you. So again, I have this simplistic um, diagram. So first thing we can help you with is hardware, right? So some of these hardware uh, is expensive. Like the HoloLens, it's like $3,500. <laughs> this Vive, uh, I think it's like $1,000 or something. Um, well, this one is like, it's cheaper, it's $200, $250. So what I'm saying is, um, we have the devices, so if you want to try them and figure out if you want one, or if you have like a short-term need for them, come to us, we can let you use them. We also have like the bigger displays, right? That, as I said, you can book. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing we provide, hardware. Second one is um, software support for building applications, right? So of course, if you want a custom application for your data or for your use case, uh, you need to build your own application. And we have three options. I'll talk about them later. As I said, we have TechVis that works with the Viso. SimLab, it's a drag and drop uh, interface. And Unity, which is more complex but more flexible, okay? And aside from the hardware and like the software development, we can also help you convert your data into something 3D, right? As I said, I do, I mean, we do workshops for helping you convert your image stack into something 3D. And we can help you figure out like what's the best way to convert your data into something that you can display in AR, VR, okay? So this is an overview of that, right? And I'll talk about them in more detail. So for the hardware, we have a bunch of uh, VR devices, so we try to buy like the latest one. Um, I mean, I won't go through the features of each, but basically um, uh, some of them are tethered. What that means is that it only works if it's connected to a PC. Some of them are standalone, like the Quest 2 here. Right now I'm using it connected to my PC, but I can detach this and it, it can run on its own, right? Um, so yeah, we have these. We also have the augmented reality devices, so the HoloLens that you've seen before, and the Magic Leap. This is the Magic Leap. So I'm not sure if you've, yes? Um, to be honest, to be honest, mm, sorry, can you say that? Yeah, so that's a good question. So first of all, um, so the older vibes that we have, they actually still work. So, but of course, like the newer game developers and the new, like the newer software, uh, at some point, they stop supporting the older devices, but so far they still work. Now, in terms of like deciding which one to get, 
So each of these has a trade-off between the price and the features, right? So for example, the Quest 2, again, these are the cheapest at $250, but the resolution is lower and the specs are lower. Like it has, a, I don't know, a eight gig of memory. So it just limits you in terms of the applications you can run. Um, this is the newest one from uh, Meta, right? So this is like a higher end, like the most expensive VR headset right now. And it has just like nicer resolution. And uh, the great thing about high resolution is, I mean, aside from high resolution, so you can see the, you can get better quality. Um, exactly. And it also avoids, helps avoid uh, motion sickness because the, the graphics is smoother, right? It avoids the, the delays more, so you get sick less. Um, and yeah, it's more about the features, really. Um, uh, and like the comfort, for example, the devices are getting lighter and lighter because you're putting it on your head, so the heavier it is, the more uncomfortable it is, becomes. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just newer and newer features. Like the Quest Pro has nicer cameras as well. So um, while you're in VR, you can also see the real world if you want. So these are the only Yes. So Yeah, so we have. It depends on your needs, but I would do that, for example. Yeah. Um, yes. So, for example, we had one guy from admissions who specifically asked for the cheap ones, the Quest 2, because they have an application that will be used by students who they assume has this cheaper version at home, right? Like a virtual tour of Kaust. So they specifically asked for that. Um, so yeah, different price points, different features. Um, and for the augmented reality, Magic Leap, I've actually, to be honest, never used it. We have it there, um, but I've, I've never used it. The, the HoloLens right now, I would say, is more popular, and there's more tools to build applications for it. But I don't know if you remember back in the day, like there was a big hype about Magic Leap. Like they... It, they, they, the, the company itself like, had $2 billion of investment or something. But now it's like it didn't really pan out. Anyway, so we have these devices. Um, sorry? This one? So this is actually where, that's a computer for it. So you put it in your pocket. So you strap it there, and then it does the compute. So the HoloLens, that's a nice thing. Like, Everything is inside, like the computer is inside, the battery is here. Um, so it's just more convenient, but here it's, it's tethered. And that's a controller. So this one doesn't have a controller. No, this is the computer. So this one, that's the computer. It's just small, it's like a moda, mobile phone. Yeah, exactly. You download things in it. Uh, it's the same with this one, right? So you can think of it, it's like running Windows on it. So there's a Microsoft Store. And then there's, it's going to show you all the apps that run in the HoloLens. But for example, I'm building an application on my laptop. I can actually connect a cable to it so I can upload the app into it. Um, All right, so the other thing, um, you also need like nice computers, right? So especially for the bigger VR devices, uh, you need a, a decent computer or laptop that has uh, powerful graphics processors, right? Because otherwise, it's just not going to work. So we have these. Uh, we, we don't lend these out, but uh, you can book them. Like we have a booking system. Uh, so you can develop your application or try things out. All right, so now, the, aside from the head-mounted stuff, as I said, we have these like bigger displays. Um, so this one is in uh, building one, uh, Seaside. 
So if you walk along the spine, you're going to see it for sure. So it has 21 3D TVs, okay? And again, the way it works, you put on these stereo glasses, and it's a 3D TV, so you see uh, 3D content, right? Um, and I'll show you later how to use this. But basically, we have this, and again, you can book this space. It's great for giving demonstrations or showing your data to multiple people, because in, in here, one person is in 3D, in VR, and I mean, you can see what I see on the screen, right? But not everyone sees 3D. So here, everyone sees 3D, right? So that's, that's a nice advantage. Um, so we have another similar setup with 21 projectors on the other side of building one. Um, and yeah, it's called the cubes. So it's, it's a similar thing. Again, I'll show you how to use this later. And as I said, you can book these things uh, on our website. So if you just go to wiki.vis.caus.edu.sa, there should be like a booking tab there. And you'll find all the information there. All right, so that was the hardware. Um, now, is the, now comes the software. What do we pro provide support in? So the first one is TechVis, right? So for those of you who use Aviso, so this is how Aviso looks like, right? So you can load your data in there. Uh, you can do your analysis, visualization on your desktop. And now, if you want to bring your data in VR, you just run this, I don't know, four clicks, and you're in VR. I'll show a video later how, how to do this. Um, so we have two licenses of this. So this is one disadvantage. Right now we have, uh, oh, three actually, three licenses. So one for each of those cave displays and one for a computer in building one, okay? So that's one disadvantage, because this is a bit expensive. But again, you can book and use these spaces. The other one is SimLab. So right now we have two licenses. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Again, I will show you later how this works. But basically, it's super easy to use. Really, in like less than five minutes, you can have a VR application running. And you just drag and drop uh, in here. I'll, I'll show you later. And finally, we have Unity. So this is how it looks like. Again, it's a game engine. You use it for building games, right? And I put here 50 licenses. We have 50 educational licenses. But if you're just building something for personal use, you can use it for free. Okay, and I'll talk about it more later. And if you need help with using any of these software, you can send us an email, okay? Or just reach out to me. Um, so, of course, we have hardware and software, but we also have the expertise, right? So that's me, right? So I have uh, experience with building AR, VR applications. The only thing is that this thing evolves pretty quickly, really. Like every month, there's a new thing coming out. So, yeah, if you want to use the latest uh, tools, we can look and learn together, okay? Um, so there's other things, right? So... We provide consultation, right? If you want to do your own hardcore programming, we can help you. Um, again, converting your data into something 3D, we can help you with that. We've had experience where <clears throat> someone wants to test a commercial software, but they don't have the system, like they don't have a VR device. So they come to us, they test it out. If they think they like it, then they will buy their own uh, system. Okay, So we also have that. All right. Uh, again, if you need help with the consultation or support, send us an email. Okay. Now we're going to take a 10-minute break. Um, and um, this one is for the signups. If you want to have like a one-on-one -on -one session, uh, you can book something there. Okay. So like we can discuss possible projects or if you want to try out all the demos, we can do that. That's for tomorrow. Okay. Get some cookie, coffee, water, toilet break. My pleasure. You all look so excited. <laughs> I love it. Still lots of like water and cookies there. I mean, uh, get as much as you can. Um, all right. I'll just continue to the next part. 
So now comes the example scenarios, right? So as I said, the goal of this is to show you um, some scenarios, and hopefully one of them is similar to what you have. So you get an idea of uh, how to move on from, from your data. So the first one is if you're using a Viso already, right? So there's one or two here who've used a Viso before. Uh, and as I said, this is a software that we provide in cows and we provide support for it. We provide training. It's for data visualization and analysis. And at some point, you might be working with 3D data and you want to see it in VR. Then all you need is TechVis. And again, we have this installed in three computers in cows. And what that allows you to do is in a few clicks, you're in VR with your data, right? And you can manipulate, measure, interact with your data, or in these caves. So actually right now, this is the only way to display something on the caves, okay? So only, it only works with Aviso. So that's one limitation uh, that we have. Um, if there comes a need, if you, for example, for some reason, want to display something on the cave without using a Viso, talk to us. We'll try to solve that. But yeah, this is how it looks like. This is a recording. All right, well, now let's it. go ahead and have a quick look again at how we can use a Viso directly in virtual reality. Here I have my Rock CT project opened and I added an ortho slice and used the ortho slice to clip my surface view. We create the TechVis connection object in Aviso and then start the TechVis controller. Make sure that the headset and controllers are detected. Click the VR icon and then the Aviso window. And in the TechVis module, click connect and then auto scale. Now you can lift the That's VR right. headset you click uh, and you're in to VR. your uh, head height and then the click the center button to move the model uh, in front of you. And then you can now uh, put on your VR headset and grab your controllers. You can now click the grab button or use the grab button to bring the model close to you and move it around. And use the trigger button to directly interact with the modules in VR. And as you can see, in just a matter of a few minutes, we are able to switch our visualization and interaction from the desktop into virtual reality. So again, this is like the easiest way right now to get your data into VR. If you can bring it to a Viso somehow, then with just a few, cl few clicks, you're in VR, right? So I would say if you can, and if you just want to see your data in 3D, in VR, try to bring your data to a Viso, right? Um, so again, we can take a look at your data and figure out like if there's a format that we can convert it to so we can load it to a Viso. So this is an example that I did for uh, Seymour, so the Coastal Marine uh, Resource Core Lab. So this is on the left, that's the data they have, right? It's just a picture. But this is basically a bathymetry data, right? The, it's, a, it's a GeoTIFF format. So each pixel here corresponds to a depth uh, underwater, right? So they basically have a boat with some sensors in the back, and then they basically measure how deep the seafloor is. And each pixel here corres corresponds to the depth. So the brighter it is, I think the more shallow or vice versa. But yeah, the, the grayscale here corresponds to the depth. So that's what they have and we wanted to see it in uh, 3D, in VR, right? So that we can virtually go underwater and see the ocean floor. So again, this is just an image, right? But if you can convert it, or if you can load it to a Viso, which we could, then we can convert it into a 3D model that looks like this. It's basically just a few clicks again. It just turns it into a height map where each pixel just gets lifted in the Z direction. So you get something like this. And now, doing a similar step as before, a few clicks, you get something like this. So I'm there, I run TechVis, and now it's displayed on the cave, right? So now I can see it in stereo. I have the glasses on, I can fly around. So 
if you want to show this to students, to your PI, or whatever, this is going to be an amazing option, right? Um, so again, this is in building one uh, in the showcase area. So that's the computer where I have Aviso running. I load the data there, a few clicks, and boom, I'm here, all right? I just, I love this uh, video. Super simple, right? So if you have a way to bring your data to Aviso, it's there, like you have it in VR. So this is the first scenario, right? The advantage, great for Aviso users, right? Because it's basically for free. You're already using Aviso, just a few clicks, you're in VR. Um, you can, I mean, not only can you see the data, but you can interact with it, right? You've seen how I was moving the ortho slice. Um, if you have probes or if you want to measure distances, you can, you can do that as well. That's amazing. Modify the? Mm, in Aviso, yes. But in VR, it's tricky. But yeah, you can modify like apply filters or yeah, you can edit your data in Aviso. Again, you, can, you just have to bring your data to Aviso. That's the challenge sometimes. No programming, right? Just a few clicks. It works both on the head-mounted device and on the cave. And the nice thing is because it's a commercial product, like we're paying for the license for this, we have techni technical support from the developers of TechBiz, right? So if things go wrong or if you have questions, we can ask them. Disadvantage, uh, yeah, basically if you want custom, like your own way to interact with your data, it's very difficult to add. And we only have three licenses, right? Um, and as I said, um, right now, Aviso doesn't support a lot of 3D modeling formats. So we'll have to figure out something to, to bring it into Aviso. All right, so that was the first scenario. The second one um, is using SimLab, okay? So this is more for the scenario where you have you already have a 3D model of your data, right? So for example, who of you used the 3D printers in PCL, prototyping, yeah? Or if you've used a 3D modeling software like Blender, um, what else I can think of the SolidWorks, yeah, AutoCAD, all these SketchUp. Um, so a lot of these 3D modeling tools I mean, what's the, the goal of that is to create a 3D model, right? Like 3D model of a screw, a table, you name it, right? For architecture, they use it for building 3D models of buildings. So if you use this software, uh, at some point or in the end, you will be able to export a 3D model, right? Which is just a file that describes your 3D uh, data. So in this example, I just downloaded a 3D model of this uh, screw from the Thingiverse, right? Thingiverse is just a website where people share 3D models for 3D printing. And, but this can be anything, right? Again, this is just an example. It can be anything. It could be a 3D model of your coral, a 3D model of your product prototype. Uh, important thing is you already have the 3D model. And now, uh, this video, let me pause it first. This video is gonna show you how I can, in like less than two minutes, put that 3D model into a virtual reality application, okay? So this one is using SimLab. That's the new software that we are uh, providing. So um, yeah, let me play it from the beginning again and show you how easy it is, okay? I'll play it once and then I'll, I'll explain the steps. Oh, so this is adding the virtual reality character. Now this is importing the 3D model. You have to specify the units, millimeters, meters, whatever. You get the model inside, and then you just drag it to the position where you want it, to the 3D world. I'll put it in front of my face so that when I load the application, it's right in front of me. Okay. 
and then I'm going to add um, interaction. So you just click the object, click, uh, there's like an interaction or make interactive button. And now I'm export, exporting the VR application. That's it. Very minimal, right? But 80% of the time, this is all you need. And now I'm going to run the application. So of course, I mean, you plug in your VR headset and stuff. That's it. So now I'm in VR. This is my controller. And you see the screw in front of me, right? And I can interact with it. So imagine if this was your, I don't know, coral or if this was a house, I mean, you'll be teleported into your house and you can fly around it, walk around it. Um, but that's how easy it is, right? That was two minutes, like not even sped up. Um, and I mean, yeah, yes, you can do it. Yeah. 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 So let me show you. So I'm running SimLab right now. Um, let's just wait for it to load. Um, so this is the, I mean, that's SimLab. Basically, as I, as I told you earlier, it's actually quite powerful for making training applications. I mean, I haven't done it, but you can see it. So let me... You see, there's this training builder module. If you look there, it says training builder. And it shows you these icons, right? Like inputs, events, responses. It allows you to basically um, like build, without programming, build kind of a game, right? That says, OK, um, I want to train someone on how to assemble this, right? So there's this piece plus this piece. I have the 3D model of them. I put them there. And I say, in order for this mission to be complete, the player has to put the cover in here. And boom, that's step one done. Step two is whatever, like putting it in a package or not. Um, so you can use it. I haven't used it personally, but you can. I and mean, then um, maybe later on, I'll share like a, a link to the examples page that they have. It's actually pretty amazing. Um, for example, they have a training application for firefighters or like fire emergency training, right? Like they have a whole warehouse and then uh, there's like a, a virtual fire <laughs> and then you have to find like all the emergency stuff, right? So you can do that. They also have all these assets built in, right? Like you have furniture, you have uh, yeah, you have beds, um, you have different materials, wood, metal, etc. cetera. Um, there's also like 3D scenes already, like warehouse, whatever. Um, there's like a, a lab. Let me try the lab. Ah, okay, I have to, I have to log in. I don't want to do that now. But yeah, you have a library of components that you can add to the scene, right? Which makes it easier. So you don't have to build everything from scratch. Um, so yeah, I mean, personally, I've only used this a couple hours, actually. But it's amazing. Like, um, the reason why we got this is actually Seymour is uh, building a, a boat, right? Like, a, I don't know how many million dollar boat. And they hired, like, a, a company to build, a, to design it. So we have the 3D model of the boat. And basically, because it's not constructed yet, they wanted the professors here, the researchers, to virtually tour the boat. And we actually have that application. Uh, if you, I mean, I don't have it here, but it's running in Showcase. If you want to try it out, it's awesome. Then you can see the boat even before it's constructed. So as you can imagine, what's the usefulness of that? Then the researchers can go in VR and say, oh, you know, they actually found like something on the floor that if they're pushing a cart, it's going to obstruct it, right? If they're pushing like something heavy. So you can see 
the design even before it's built for the house or apartment, right? Let's say you're, you want to build your own house and the architect usually you know, you would show you like a blueprint or like a rendering, but imagine being in VR and actually walking around your house in VR before it's built. Then you can still make changes if you want, right? And SimLab, super easy to use for that. Okay, now, again, advantage, easy to use, no programming, or there's a bit of programming, but as you've seen, it's a visual programming, it's drag and drop. There's a library of 3D models and assets inside. There's basic movement and interaction. So I'm not sure if you notice it, but like for the bolt, I just click like two or three things and then I can grab it. Because otherwise it's just there. You won't be able to, to grab it. <clears throat> Easy to deploy. So this is a big advantage. Uh, in SimLab, um, I'm not sure, but the very last step that I did was like file export VR package. That generates one file that now I can give it to you. I can let you download it from my website. And if you double click it on your computer, it will download all the necessary things to run it. So that's, that's pretty cool. And now this is the thing. It can load many different 3D model formats, unlike Aviso, okay? So there's like all these formats, like if you use Blender, AutoCAD, whatever, they will probably be able to export to at least one of these, okay? Which means that if you can export to one of these formats, you can bring it into SimLab, okay? So, for example, STL, that's a popular format for 3D printing. Uh, also OBJ, GLTF, FBX, you name it, right? Hmm? There's actually, there's new technology, you should see it. PDF can view 3D models. It's amazing, like I, I just saw it like a few weeks ago. It's for the coral reef, like uh, from UCS, or from someone, they just showed, sent me a PDF, and inside the PDF is a 3D viewer. Unbelievable. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But it's amazing, PDF has 3D now. That's, that's amazing, yeah. Um, so the disadvantage of this one, uh, yeah, because there's no programming, it's difficult to add your own interactions. We only have two licenses, okay? One of them is this laptop, but the nice thing is we can transfer the license. So if you wanna use it for, I don't know, a week, we can let you use it. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. So I'm kind of going from super easy to easy, and now it's more like intermediate. Um, so again, this is starting from a 3D model, right? So if you have your data in uh, OBJ, FBX, GLTF, then we can bring it into Unity, which is now the game engine, right? And this is the example I showed you earlier. Um, and this is more complicated, okay? So let me, um, let me see. <clears throat> let me see what I have here. All right, so I guess I was supposed to show you. All right. So quick question before I get into this. Who actually installed Unity? Okay, that's good. No, because it's, it can be tricky. Like, um, it can be tricky, right? So there's, you download the application, you have to set up the license. Uh, and if you're building AR, VR, you have to download many things. So I think it's kind of perfect today, so I'm just gonna go through the steps. Um, and if you really want to do it yourself, the recording is gonna be online. There's also like tons of YouTube videos, okay, that tell you how to do this. But today I just want to show you so you get a feeling of how easy or difficult it is. So this is the Unity game engine, yeah? And um, just like SimLab, so this is your 3D world, yeah? So if, you, if I click play here, 
I, I, I can, I get transported in VR. Uh, and now this is a, actually that's a good question. This is a um, an example from uh, Steam. Who knows Steam? Like for gaming. So Steam is a, a actually I have it running here. Um, so this is Steam, right? So for those of you who don't know, this is an application for gaming, PC gaming, right? So there's a library here or a store <coughs> where I can buy games, right? Uh, if it loads, yeah. So I can buy games, and basically it installs it on my computer, then I can play it. And it happens that they have VR games, okay? And it also happens that they, uh, they have a software that's very popular. It's called Steam VR. I have it running here. If you see it here on the bottom, that's Steam VR. It's basically the bridge between my computer and the VR headset. Okay? So it, it's the bridge. So if, we want, if I want to build an application, that application talks to Steam VR. And Steam VR talks to the device, okay? So it's my bridge. Um, so I have that running. And this example is from Steam VR. So the developers give this, the developers of Steam VR give this or make this available online. So that, for example, I want to build a game. Instead of starting from scratch, I can actually take parts of this and just use it for my game. That's why you see like this. Thing, like for arrow shooting, if I want to make a game for arrow shooting, um, like the example I showed you before, like these cubes, um, like it has this the code, this one interactable, that I can reuse. So if I, I mean, I'll show you in, in a little bit. So this coral, So this coral is a 3D model that I just downloaded from somewhere, okay? And then I, I mean, I drag and drop it basically here, then it's there. And just like in SimLab, I want to tell Unity, I want to make this interactable, which means I, I want the user to be able to grab it, move it around. And instead of coding everything from scratch, what I did was I just look at this cube and I copy this code. I mean. I copy this and put it there. I'll show this step by step later. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, so now I just put it here. So it's like a it's like a template, right? So instead of starting from scratch, this is like a template that shows you everything that's possible, um, and then you can pick what you want and copy it. Um, so anyway, going back to Unity. Sorry, that was a. Uh, so this is Unity. You have your 3D scene here, uh, and you can add 3D models by putting them here. So this here on the left is the. It's called hierarchy, but basically you can. It's a list of everything in your scene. So if, for example, this longbow. If I go there. Yeah, so you see the arrow and stuff. Um, and then here on the bottom, it's like your ex file explorer. So you have your files here. So this is the model of my coral. I'm not sure if you see it. Uh, oh, but this is my coral. Ugh. So yeah, if I if I click the coral here, this one on the right side is called the properties window. It just shows you the properties of whatever object you selected. So here it shows me a preview of the coral and all the properties. Yeah. So again, it's it can be intimidating in the beginning, like there's a lot of moving pieces. But once you get the hang of it, um, it's very powerful because then you have a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Hmm? Exactly. That's why, I mean, for me, I rarely start from scratch. 
I usually load some template. Um, there's also a, what's called an asset store, where basically you can buy assets, right? So people build 3D models or make, make mini games that you can just buy and reuse, right? Or sometimes it's free. Um, so yeah, that's 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 it. That's Unity. And later I'll hopefully do like a more step by step. Uh, demonstration of this. I'll make it quick. Um, but this is it. So if you have a 3D model, so let me show you here. So this is my 3D model. Like it doesn't look much, but let me see if I can open it. Okay, I don't have, maybe. No. Anyway, so this is the 3D model that I downloaded online and I just drag and drop it here. And that's it, right? And then I can put the coral here. So now it's there, right? And I can put as many as I, I want, right? So if you have, I don't know, like a 3D model of a table, a chair, or a prototype of your product, you just drag and drop it here. If it's compatible, it should just show up. And then you can drag and drop it to your scene. Oops. Okay, and then if I want to make it interactable, I just click it, and then here, add component, and then look for interactable. Yeah, and that should make it interactable. So you might ask me, okay, how do I know it's called interactable? I mean, you just have to like read the documentation or by experience you learn these things. Okay, and then you press play. And when I play this, the game runs on my computer. And then, like you see now in Steam VR, it says now playing. Um, so my application talks to Steam VR. Mm -hmm. So now I'm here. Do you see it? Okay, so now where are those? So see the corals that I put are there? There, like the ones that I just drag and dropped. Um, and like the one that I put in yesterday is here. Oh, oh no, it fell on the floor. Uh, okay, so this is the problem. I cannot reach it. But anyway, it should be like this, right? So I just copied... Um, the script from one of these. Oh my God. Okay, there. So you know, imagine just this is the coral and it's interactable. And it's very similar to the SimLab one, right? But the thing here now is, oh my God. So it can interact with the other objects. There's other features here. Um, like here, this one. Uh, I cannot reach it right now, but that one, for example, I can squish it, right? So if I squish it, it changes the shape. There's a grenade. If I throw it, it explodes. There's like controls like this one. I think I can reach this. Yeah, you see this one? So I'm, contro I'm controlling that using this. So again, these are just templates. Like this one, for example, I should be able to like, drive so you can, if you want to build like a driving application, you can just take the script from this, I cannot reach it, uh, and, and use that, right? Um, and here is a button. Uh, uh. Actually, this is a nice example of like, uh, for example, giving the feeling of someone with short hands or like a T-Rex, right? 
So I know how frustrating it is. Like, I cannot reach stuff. Um, so anyway, you get the idea. Uh, all right, so. And yeah, I mean, right now I'm kind of in the prototyping stage, right? I'm editing my game and then trying it out, editing, trying. So there's a lot of this back and forth stuff. Um, and once you're happy with your application, uh, you can deploy it. So here, um, you can build, and then it gives you, uh, like, I have an example here. Like, it gives you a folder with a bunch of files, and this one is basically the executable. Like, if you run this, the, the users will be able to play your game. So I'll show an example later. Hmm? So Aviso is uh, mainly, sorry? Yes. It's really f for data, vis, and analysis. So um, yeah, it's focused on data. And the VR is more of just a plugin, like an additional product. And Unity is really for building games. So 2D games, uh, 3D games, VR, AR, mobile games. Um, it's one of the top game engines. So the, the other one is Unreal Engine. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. But these are like two of the more most popular uh, game engines. Um, but again, there, it takes time to learn it. And you know, like what we have here, like things can break easily. Uh, like right now, this one just stopped working because the, I mean, I'll show it in the disadvantages. Let me. Software evolves fast. Like every two months, there's a new version of Unity. And sometimes your application will just break, okay? So actually in my computer in the office, I have like 10 versions installed. Because once I start developing an application on one version, I, don't, I try not to switch. And then, like, yeah, things break. Uh, so, yeah, pros and cons, right? Like, you get more features every month, but yeah, things can break. Anyway, going to pros, you can do advanced interactions because you have really, like, all the control, but it, you need to program them. There's basic templates. As I said, you can download from... The asset store, there's free, there's paid. Support for many devices and platforms. Supports phone, tablets, desktop, AR, VR. Um, yeah, 3D models. Cons, so you need to be familiar with Unity. It takes time to learn it. And the SDKs, or software development kits. So for example, if I want to build an application for the HoloLens, they have their own SDK that you have to learn. So their own like um, their own library. If you want to develop for this one, you have your own library. So this is kind of one of the challenges of the AR VR industry right now. And the past few years, they're actually starting to come together, like all these companies, to try to build one software to rule them all, like one toolkit, so that developers just need to learn one thing. Yeah. Exactly, because really, like this one, it drives me crazy. Like, it's too complex, right? That's why I wrote it here: complex development setup. It's complicated, um, and yeah, if you want to do advanced stuff, you need programming, okay? But it's awesome. So I'll show you the examples that we built later with Unity, and they're amazing. All right, that was the third scenario, and now we come to the fourth. So who of you use ArcGIS? Awesome. So um, this is the scenario that I'm excited about. So this is something I just discovered a few weeks ago, that you can actually bring ArcGIS data into VR. Okay. So for those of you, and this is a screenshot of the demo. Hopefully it will work. So for those of you who are not familiar with ArcGIS, it's a uh, geographic data application, yeah. yeah? So 
It's about maps with data associated to it, right? So this is the online version of it. And you see here a map, and then you have data. Like, I don't know what this is. Let's say uh, where the playgrounds are in a map. Um, and I don't know, number of average number of people who play there, et cetera. So you can create these maps. You can share them. You can analyze. Um, this is another example where it's more 3D. So ArcGIS is starting to support more and more 3D data. So this is, I don't know, a map. So there's a map, and then there's 3D buildings. And then the buildings have a color. I don't know what the colors mean. Let's say um, average energy consumption. Okay. So in ArcGIS, you can build maps like this, data-driven maps. Okay. And then you can do analysis, visualization, etc. Super powerful. Uh, there's probably like hundreds of features in there, right? Now, the nice thing is, as I said, they're starting to add more and more 3D uh, data, right? Like these buildings, um, elevation, right? So if you have the elevation map uh, that allows you to see the terrain, like the actual height of the terrain, uh, what else? 3D buildings. Um, yeah, 3D models. So they, they have an example of like, they have the 3D models of different stadiums all around the world. Um, and yeah, now imagine, of course you can view this on your desktop, which is great. Um, and I think I have an example. But even more amazing, now you can bring yourself in VR, which is just beautiful. And let me see if I can run that for you. Let me just close this. And the beautiful part about this is it's super easy. You just need like the either a URL to the map, so it has to be hosted in the cloud, or um, if you're using ArcGIS Pro, there's a way to export the map as a file, and then you can just bring that file into Unity. So let me show you here. <clears throat> All right. So this is Unity, right? It's the same interface that I showed you before. Um, so I have... For sure. Yes. Yeah. That's the beauty of this. So there was actually someone who made a game out of this. So they had a Godzilla, Godzilla character who's destroying the buildings. And it was based on like real data, like New York buildings. Exactly, right? So that's the thing. So this one is San Francisco. Um, and this one is actually getting data from the cloud. So I don't know if you notice, but buildings are loading slowly, right? So you see they're loading slowly, and then there's like a color on the ground. Um, so this data is coming from ArcGIS in the cloud, okay? And uh, let me, um, and let me show you first how easy it is to add layers, right? So each, so there's layers in ArcGIS, right? Like each layer describes a certain data set. So for example, here the buildings are its own layer. So it's here. And if I uncheck this, it will disappear. So this is, this is all you have to describe to bring your data in Unity. So first you have a name. You can name it whatever. The type. So uh, right now, it only supports image layers, so images, 3D objects, right, like the buildings. Um, mesh layer is also 3D objects. And vector tile layer. So this is a 2D kind of vector image. So right now, these are supported. So you have to provide the type and the URL. So maybe later, I'll show you how this looks like. But if you're using ArcGIS 
uh, Pro or ArcGIS Online, there's a way to host your data in the cloud. Uh, or if you export it to a file, you just put the file name here. And then you have here the opacity. So you can make it semi-transparent, whatever. And then is it visible? Yes. Uh, I have another image layer here, which is like the, I don't know, some color coding maybe of those different zones. I can also just disable, enable, make it more translucent, okay, but I don't see it much. You get the idea, right? So this is managing the layers. And then let me turn these off. You see I have a street view kind of a satellite imagery, and that's the base map, right? So if you use ArcGIS, this is pretty common. It gives you the kind of the texture for the map, right? And then there's also an elevation map. So if I actually go uh, where there are hills, you would see that it's elevated, right? So anyway, let me run this first and see if I can give you a demo. But this is mind blowing. Like, this is super new. It's just late last year that this got released. But I love it. This is what I'm most excited about. Cool, so it seems to be working. Um, <clears throat> All right, so you can see it? I'm flying over San Francisco right now, right? With data in it. So imagine if this was, I mean, we can actually go to Kaust later if you want, but now I'm in VR and I'm exploring San Francisco with data in it, right? So if I want to do analysis on this data, I can do it and hopefully, yes, I can fly around it. So let me, and you see, okay, there's a kind of a hill over there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the elevation is there. Uh, now I'm going up. I mean, this is amazing, right? And the beauty of this, as I said, if you're already using ArcGIS, it just takes a few steps to export your data. And boom, right? I mean, I'll let you guys try this out later. But to me, that's mind-blowing. I mean, this is amazing. Especially for those who are already using ArcGIS in Kaos. So for the coral reefs, for example, right? If you have the bathymetry, put it there. Then you have the 3D models of a reef. Exciting stuff. Um, hmm? Yeah, well, it's more fly, but yeah, you can. You can. Like, you just, I mean, let's, let's try it. And you can, as I said, you can build games out of this, right, if you want. <clears throat> so let me go to the floor. Yeah, and you can see kind of the, the detail of the buildings here. Right, so I can see the, it's, it's a bit low res, but of course it depends on how much data you put in. So you can see, I can see this, can you see it? Yeah, so I'm walking on the streets, and as I said, this is hosted on the cloud, so it's, it's loading the data while I'm, I'm using it. I mean, this is amazing, right? Mind blowing. Yes, all right, so I kind of um, forgot to mention that. So uh, ArcGIS provides you the SDK, right? It's a tool, but it's, it's very easy to set up, maybe 10 minutes. Um, and then they have samples. So this is actually a sample from ArcGIS. I'm currently testing my own, like I'm trying to build my own. Um, but they have nice documentation and 
so far it works and as you can see it even worked with this cheap setup and you see here for example there's the longitude latitude so you can go anywhere in the world um, and yeah you just have to load the, the data amazing this is amazing um, so okay well I want to um, point out one thing so ArcGIS is a commercial product right the nice thing is that we have a license in KAUST. Um, so, of course, this one would also need some sort of license, right? And you see here, there's an API key that comes from my account, right? So I have my own ArcGIS account. If you go online, there's a few things you have to click, and then you get this key, you have to paste it there. That's it. Um, all right, and now let me go back to the slides. Again, after all of this, I'll let you try any demo you want because there's just a few of us. But this is amazing. Like, this is my favorite. Um, so again, this is great for ArcGIS users because it's relatively easy. And I can help you if it's not easy for you. The data management bar is done by ArcGIS. What I mean by that is it downloads on the fly and on demand. And you saw it, right? Like the buildings get loaded slowly. So if there's a building in the back that I didn't look at, it will not load that data. If, if, it, if I look there and it's the, the, the data is not there, it will download it for you. That's amazing. Um, advanced interactions, you can do it because it's all in Unity and can work with offline data. Just export the data to a file. Disadvantage, you need a license, but we have that in KAUST, so that's amazing. Um, if you're hosting your data in the cloud, uh, after like two million tiles, you might have to pay like one cent per tile. A tile is a, I don't know, like 10 square meter by 10 square meter uh, image. <clears throat> and um, you'll need to learn ArcGIS and Unity. To, to do this, obviously. And as I've shown you, there's only four layer types supported right now, but it, sh it should be plenty uh, to, to work with. All right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's exactly the same as Google VR. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's the same. Like, if you remember the video I showed in the beginning, Google VR, Earth, it's the same, but now you can put data on it, right? I mean, that's amazing. Uh, I mean, Google Earth, you just see what's what Google puts. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. So, again, there's plenty of tools that we can use. That's a nice option. And I guess they're also like web based, right? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. Um, next scenario. So, this is more, uh, I wrote there complex 3D data and interactions. So, the examples that I've shown so far, it's more of just bringing your data into VR and looking at it and like manipulating it in simple ways. So this is a more complex example, right? So this is a, a prototype that I did for the Shusha restoration project. And um, I mean, they changed their name to Kaust Reefscape Restoration Initiative. So the goal of this project is to basically plant corals in Shusha Island, all right? And um, the story of this is that they asked me if I can do a visualization of before and after restoration, right? Because they want to show it to management. And I said, yeah, I can do it. But in order to do that, I actually needed a way to plant corals, right? For myself, so I can build this environment. And this is the tool that uh, came out of that. 
And when they saw it, they actually liked it. And they said, wow, we can use this for planning, right? Planning and training. Um, so that was the story. And as you can see here, um, this is an example interaction. So on your left hand, you have a bunch of corals uh, that you can plant in the reef. And this is an actual um, scan of a, I mean, a scan of an actual reef. And I have a video over here. Um, so this is the, um, some restoration expert using the application. So here she's loading a garden that she already planted, you see? So that one was already planted. Um, and you see on the bottom, there's like these structures, like spider, uh, that they use to anchor the corals in. And so she, she built that using this application. And there's a button that she clicks and the corals grow bigger. So we just replace the models, right, from small to big. There's no like underlying simulation, um, just to show the before and after. And um, uh, okay, let me try to run it because uh, this is a pretty cool demo as well. I'm just worried about the if I can reach the corals, but let's try it. Because I want to show the 360 video as well. So this one has a 360 video inside. <clears throat> exactly. It's like a game, executable. Like All right, so you see, do you see the coral yeah. reef? So this is a reef, right? Um, so what happens here is that divers go underwater, they have cameras, they swim back and forth, they take pictures, they bring it to shore, uh, upload the pictures to a computer, they use some software, let's say Agisoft uh, Metashape, which generates the 3D model out of the pictures. And you get a model like this. They give me the model, I drag and drop it into Unity, uh, do a few clicks, and now I can teleport into it, right? Um, move around, explore. I can plant corals. Yes, I cannot. Okay, so yeah, I can grab corals and plant them. So yeah, I mean, just imagine I'm planting it correctly. I have limited motion right now, but that's that's it, right? Um, all right, now this is what I wanted to show. So if I go here, I actually get teleported into this 360 video of fish, right? And what this allows is, you know, from the static environment that you saw before, now it's more dynamic and more engaging, right? And for example, um, as a diver, Okay. I cannot reach the exit button. Um, I will leave it there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Screen? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it depends. So, of course, the resolution. Yeah, because the video itself is low quality. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So, this is a video I just downloaded from somewhere. Uh, but I recently got a video of an underwater unmanned underwater automatic whatever vehicle that has a camera they dive it down in the water and they're basically looking for corals right and I have that video and now what I can do is put that actual video here um, but yeah I was telling them if they have a 360 camera underwater 360 camera when they dive and plant the corals they can just put it there and then we can make the, more, the experience more dynamic right um, but yeah this was one example. 
it's a template. So if you have another application, I don't know, um, training. Again, if you have like a equipment that you want a complicated equipment that, and you want to show people how it works, you can do that. I mean, you can also just use 2D and video, but anyway. Um, so this next example um, is another, let's say, more complex uh, scenario, right? So this one is a 3D model of a small part of the brain. So what happened here, there was a, I did not build this. Uh, some other people before me, they spent six months to build this one, but it was a successful project. So they work with the neuroscientists from the BESE. So what they do is they have scans of the brain tissues, they segment the neurons, and from these neurons or the segmentation, they build 3D models of the neurons. And that's what you see here, right? Complicated network, um, let me load it up. And then they did a virtual reality tour of the brain, telling you about the different structures. أهلا بك في الدماغ خلال هذه الجولة لا تتردد بالنظر من حولك من خلال تحريك رأسك تسمى الخلايا التي تراها من حولك الخلايا العصبية والدماغ يحتوي على المليارات منها في هذا التمثيل من الدماغ ستلاحظ الكثير من المساحات الفارغة بين الخلايا العصبية نتج هذا الفراغ بعد إخفاء ما يقارب 90% من خلايا الدماغ مما يسمح لك بالتنقل بسهولة ولكن في الواقع هذا الفضاء مشغول تماما بالخلايا التي ستعيق قدرتنا على الرؤية من خلاله إن الخلايا العصبية مترابطة بأحكام وتتواصل باستمرار عن طريق استخدام إشارات كهربائية وتسمى هذه الإشارات جهود الفعل وتمثل وسيلة الخلايا العصبية للحديث مع بعضها البعض وأنت تعاين الخلايا العصبية يمكنك ملاحظة هذه الجهود الممثلة هناك كهرباء متدفقة مشرقة في جميع أنحاء الخلايا العصبية هناك مواقع محددة
looks like as if you're flying and then you do the what you're, what you're Okay, flight simulator. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You, yeah, flight, but you're seeing also. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, there's if you go to the mall in Red Sea Mall, for example, they have something like this, where like there's a chair, you put on VR, and like the chair moves. Okay. Exactly, like in the roller coaster, or in that case, the flight simulator, right? Um, where like the chair itself has something that moves it together with the application. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. You can do it. It's more complicated, like you would need some extra connections, but yeah, you can do it. So for example, the, I'm not sure if you remember, the augmented reality example with the electronics. So that one has the opposite. So we had this board, electronics board, and there's some connection, like a USB connection to the PC, because we need the signal, right, the current or whatever, sent to the PC so we can visualize it. So you need to get the sensor data. It's real time. No, that's real time. Yeah, that's real time. That's pretty cool. Uh, we did that in, in Harvard. Uh, but it never really got to market. It's more just a prototype, right? So yeah, anyway, so for, for the hands-on example, I'm just going to show like quickly uh, Unity Basics. Uh, actually, I went through some of this earlier. And like a super simple example, okay, which is putting a coral in uh, augmented. I love corals, right? Just because it's like, recently I've been working with them for, I mean, a lot. So, okay, I'm gonna switch to Unity. Hmm. Uh, I mainly use Windows. A lot of these work with Windows. I think Unity supports, uh, I'm not sure, but it could support Linux and Mac. I don't know. But that's a tricky thing. So that's a good point. So, yeah, in my experience, Windows is the most, yeah, most uh, commonly supported. So, yeah. All right, so this is Unity, right? Like, you've seen it several times now. Um, and as I said, like, this is your 3D scene, right, where you create your 3D world, put your content, etc. and on the left, you have the list hierarchy. And here you have your um, kind of file explorer, so you can drag and drop files here. Uh, in here, if I click on an object, it shows me like the different components attached to it uh, and the different properties like transform, like where it is in 3D, how it's rotated, the scale. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Uh, you have to either, that's a very good question. So there's two ways. So one is using what's called visual uh, marker. Yeah. So it's like a pattern, like you print out, I don't know, some pattern, like a red X. And then you tell the software, okay, look for this red X. And where you see that red X, put my virtual model there. The other thing is, is it's called anchoring. So this, for example, it knows my 3D world, right? It scans my world. And, um, if I put an object on this table, it will remember that because it has the 3D model of my, my world. So it will remember it and next, I turn this off, I turn it on again, it's still there. Um, so yeah, wait, just give me a sec. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, I'm using my fingers, right? This is the the augmented reality, like the one that I was showing you before. And um, this particular example, I actually picked it. By the way, the files are all in the training website. Hmm? It has cameras, yeah. It has cameras. 
to scan the world and to see you and to look for markers. So I picked this example because um, this one is for Microsoft, right? Again, it's a template, so you can use it to start your projects. Um, it has what's called a, a, like an input simulator. So what does that mean? Let me show you. Um, So what I just did is I just turned off, uh, or I, I'm telling Unity I don't have a VR or AR device. So what it does, if I now test this, if I play, if I press control, I'm not sure if you see it, it puts a virtual hand in there. So it pretends that it sees my hand going like that. So it's, it's for simulating a HoloLens, right? So what that means is it allows me to develop even without the device. So if I press Alt, it shows my left hand. And then uh, so I can click, right? So I can grab on things. Um, so it allows me to simulate having the device, which is nice. Um, and I mean, I picked this also so that if in case people wanted to try it, they get something. But okay, now I'm gonna say I have the device. So you see there's so many buttons here. So it's really like, if you're not using like a YouTube video or whatever, it's uh, pretty confusing. I'm still confused. <laughs> so anyway, um, so what I wanna show is, <clears throat> So what I want to show is the, um, it's called holographic remoting. <laughs> Sounds complicated, but all that means is that um, what, I'm going to run the application on my laptop, but it's going to stream it to the device. And it's like having a cable actually attached to it. So that whatever this one sees, like it sees my hand, it sends that information to the laptop, but the laptop is doing the computing, right? So this is, um, this allows you to do fast debugging. Because otherwise, I would have to build this, upload the application here, and that takes a long time. So let me just run that now. Okay, let me share what I see. Yeah, that's it, right? So I use my finger to interact with the menu. And then there's this app called Holographic Remoting. It's basically, if you've done remote desktop, it's like that. Okay, let me just... So now it shows me the IP address and I just connect to it. All right. So now what happens is if I press play here, So now it's running on my laptop, but oh. let me turn off this. All right, there. So you see it's moving there on the screen. And that's also, if I share this. All right. So it's in front of me, right? 
So again, what's happening is the app is running on my laptop, and it's streaming the display here. And then this one is getting my hand, yeah, you see the interactions, and it's sending that to the laptop. So everything is happening on my laptop. So this way I can edit the application here and then see it, see it here. So right now, if I try to grab this treasure chest, nothing happens, okay? So this is the simple thing that I wanted to do today, just to show you how things work. So let me, there's a lag, there's a lag. As I said, because it's uh, streaming through the Wi-Fi, um, and the way it works, it records a video here first. So you see it's gonna, it's buffering. It records a video and then transmits the video. So it's not real time. But later, I mean, I'll let you guys try this. What I see here is real time, right? Only the transmission is not. Yeah, yeah, it's real time. Otherwise it's like, no. Um, okay. So, okay. Um, this is Unity, this is Unity. I'm just using Microsoft template. So in the VR before, I was using Steam VR's template. Now this is Microsoft template. So you download it, uh, and it just runs. And the nice thing about this is it, it's an actual tutorial. So on the right, these are like step-by-step -step, uh, things. So here there's a turtle, and there's a instruction here, like okay, Click this, click that, blah, blah. Uh, and then you follow the, the steps. And that's why I picked this as well, because you can go home and if you want, if you really want to do it, try it. But this is the one that I want to show you. Um, is the object manipulator. Okay. So there's the steps here. And uh, actually, I'm not going to follow the steps. I'm just going to show you. So for example, I want to be able to drag this object and move it around. So I just click the 3D object. Um, and then, uh, yep, so it's here. Oh, wait, <laughs> I can see it here. So this is the treasure chest, right? I'm not sure if you can see the text. Um, now, all I have to do, just like in SimLab, a few clicks, there's an add component here. Oh, it's already there. I just add interactable. Inter um. Oh, no, no, sorry. Man object manipulator. Uh, no, I think it's in the Steam VR. <laughs> That's why I see it's confusing, right? Because this one, it's the Microsoft people who develop it. They come up with their own names. So it's really, it can be confusing, right? Um, and now it should just work. That was easy, right? But then you have to know that, oh, there's this object manipulator they have to add. So let me try it actually. And let me share. Okay. Yeah, I think it needs some time to think. But that's, that's the idea, right? You just put 3D models there, and then you have a library of behavior, like object manipulation, animation, etc. Click and add. The challenge there is you want to create a new interaction, like the coral planting. I have to write code for that, right? But that's kind of uh, next level, um, but it's doable. So now I should, oh, let me. All right, so now I should be able to, yeah, exactly, right? And yeah, I can also just grab it like that. 
<clears throat> and if you have, I mean, I'm not going to show it, just so we finish early. If you have a 3D model of the coral, you just drag and drop to the, um, just drag and drop it here. I actually have the coral here. I mean, let me just do it quickly. I mean, this is my coral. I drag and drop it. Boom, it's there. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm going to do it now, right? So just to show you how easy it is. Um, so object manipulator. Actually, there's another thing I have to add. It's a box collider. It's just to do the physics. But now if I run this one, you see that was like four clicks. This is the last one, and then we're done. Still thinking. But yeah, I mean, once you have everything set up, it's kind of easy. But sometimes just setting up, it can be tricky. But I can help there. OK. Um, right, so now you see the coral, right? It's there, and I should be able to grab it. Right? And put it on the table. Right? You cannot see it, but I mean, I can see it, right? Um, yeah, but you know, like um, in the future, that's what like the, uh, Apple, for example, they're trying to make this smaller, so it's like this, the size of your glasses. Yeah, it's it's coming, right? So. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's coming. Like, the technology is getting pushed forward. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is it. Like, today, I just wanted to show you as many things as possible, right? As many cool things as possible, just to let you think about, OK, I have my data. What can I do with it, right? Because yeah. it's, it's basically just templates, right? Like, the, the coral there, if you replace it with, I don't know, your bacteria or whatnot, it's the same. The, the coral reef, if you replace it with a warehouse, a 3D model of a warehouse, of a lab, the same. You can explore it, move things around, like furniture. Imagine the corals are the furniture or equipment. You can move it around. Um, ArcGIS, that's, that's amazing, I think. So just think about all these things. And if you have a, a project in mind, either you do it, just Google stuff, or reach out to us, right? So you can reach out to us, and we can build it together. Or I can build it for you. Um, and yeah, so you can reach out to us. You can sign up to this if you want. Or um, you have my email as well. Like I sent you guys uh, invitation this morning. But yeah, hopefully you got something. And uh, looking forward to hear from you. My pleasure. <laughs>